Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,772. We continue Women's Month here in Cars Yeah, celebrating women in the automotive sector by talking with 23 inspiring automotive enthusiasts throughout the month. These are all women who are shifting the conversation. Today, we're at one of my favorite events, The Quail. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm so excited today because I'm in one of my favorite places, Carmel, California, a little event we're going to talk about called The Quail, one of my favorite events during Car Week, and I'm with Courtney Ferranti. We were talking in our pre-show chat here, Courtney. I think we've known each other for almost 15 years. Welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you ready to put it in gear and release the clutch? Absolutely. Thank All you right. for having me. You're welcome. It's so excited to have you here. Now, before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that most people don't know about you, Courtney? I would probably have to say that I've been around cars and motorcycles my entire life. My dad was in the business, my grandfather was in the business, um, and my uncle resourced cars. So from a very, very young age, I um, you know, was helping my dad in, in, his, in his shop and wandering around um, the restoration building where my uncle works. And kind of a fun story, my grandpa had a 1953 three-wheel Harley. They used to be used as um, like for meter maids and police officers. Well, my sister and I would come home every day from school and we would go get the mail with him. He'd put us on the back and we'd ride down the street on his Harley. One of my best memories growing up. Yeah. So I've just, I've been in the industry really my whole life. Yeah. My other one was going to be my dad was, he was buying and selling vintage cars as long as I, as long as I can remember. And at the time, my sister and I were devastated. We were humiliated. We didn't want to get in these old cars. But looking back now, what a great opportunity, you know, I was given for, for that. It was a 19, it was a 1966 Lincoln Continental with suicide doors. And we would drive down to school and my sister and I would be ducking in the back seat because we were embarrassed. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I love it. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. Courtney Ferrante is the director of the Peninsula Hotel Signature Events, organizers of the renowned motoring events, The Quail, a motorsports gathering, and The Quail Motorcycle, hosted annually at Quail Lodge and Golf Course in beautiful Carmel, California. Today, The Quail Motorsports Gathering is widely regarded as one of the most preeminent motoring events in the world. For the past 15 years, the growth and worldwide recognition of this event, as well as spawning of the Quail Motorcycle Gathering, the nation's foremost motorcycle concourse, can be attributed to the strong leadership of Courtney. She began her journey with the Peninsula Signature Events back in 2006, about the time I believe we met as the event coordinator, and through a lot of hard work, exceptional attention attention to detail and legendary compassion and loyalty to her guests and colleagues alike. She's rightfully earned her place as the leader of the most exclusive upscale event for motorsports around the globe. I'm happy to say I've attended this event many, many times. It's one of my favorite parts of Car Week, so bravo. Courtney, we'll be back in just a minute, but first a word from our valued sponsors. So keep your seatbelts on. I'm at the quail today having fun with Courtney Ferrante. We'll be right back. You've heard me talking about Covercraft here on Cars Yes yeah, since I began bringing you inspiring automotive enthusiasts over seven years ago. Covercraft is a company I've trusted to protect my beloved vehicles since I was in high school, way back in 1975. Did you know they've been in the business longer than that? Covercraft was founded in 1965. Maybe they would have had a cover for my pedal car back then. I'll bet they did. You don't stay in business for over 55 years without providing your customers with superior quality, innovative solutions, and a massive breadth of selections and categories when it comes to protection. Their custom fit car covers are just the start. Covercraft offers covers for cars, trucks, ATVs, boats, outdoor furniture, it's on my patio, seats, trunk covers, floor dashes, masks for the front of your rides, and so much more. I have got something special just for you as a listener here on Cars Yeah. If you use the code YA21, 
Y-E-A-H-2-1 at Covercraft.com. They'll give you 10% off. That's right, 10% off. Just use the code yeah 21 Covercraft, protecting the things that move you for a long, long time. When it was time to renew my last policy for my collector car, my carrier's rates went up. They went way up. But my usage was the same and I never had made a claim. No tickets, nothing. What's with that? American Collectors Insurance, that's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. The one I call my orange crush. Has your collector car insurance recently raised your rates for no good reason? Tired of paying an annual membership fee? I was too. So I shopped around, I asked friends for recommendations, and found a winner that I can trust. And boy, am I glad I did. I'm saving hundreds of dollars. I can sleep at night knowing my baby is properly insured. American Collectors Insurance have been protecting vehicles since 1976. They provide me with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a history of taking care of their clients. What could be better than that? Give them a call for a quote today at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. And protect the ones you love like I did. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. All right, Courtney, we are back. So let's go a little deeper into the corner and have you share more about what you do, this incredible event that you put on. I mean, you're orchestrating an amazing amazing show that just blows me away every year I go. It's a really nice way to get the tires spinning a little bit here on Cars, yeah, so take the wheel. Absolutely. So I think you've already said it best. I think the introduction that you provided um, is much much better than I would give <laughs> well, it. Well, <laughs> so, it's well-deserved. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So yeah, like you said, it's the Peninsula Hotel Signature Events. We actually curate five events a year, and we came up with a signature event because it has our signature on it. It has the signature of the standards of the Peninsula Hotels. Service, the elegance, the exclusiveness. So out of the five events that that are put on, four of them take place at Quail Lodge and Golf Club. So we um, organize the Quail Ride, which is a motorcycle ride. We do the Quail Motorcycle Gathering, the Quail Rally, and the Quail A Motorsports Gathering. So those are the four kind of big Big events that we that we host annually, and believe it or not, there's a it's a team of women. All the people in my office are a group of women that are absolutely the best. They are brilliant. They're smart. They're innovative, and I feel very lucky to kind of surround myself with them. the The biggest event, obviously, is the Quail A Motorsports Gathering. Uh, we limit attendance to about six thousand guests, and as you mentioned, it is one of the most exclusive car shows in the world, which we are very proud of. We try to limit it to in order to maintain the level of service that the Peninsula Hotels is known for. So that those kind of go hand in hand with with what we do and how we plan everything. Absolutely. I always feel uh, very, very happy when I get to attend. And I love the fact that you limit it because when you go there, you don't feel like you're shoulder to shoulder and you have to wait in lines to do anything or you can't see the cars because there's too many people around them. I think it's a brilliant concept. Of course, for the, everyone who wants to go that maybe can't go, it gets a little anxious sometimes. But that's part of the I think that's part of the coolness of it for me personally. Absolutely. And that's the, that's one of the hardest things that we have to deal with is maintaining that because we have you know so many people that want to come and yep. uh, want to be a part of it. And we have to keep our promise to our guests. And that's, you know, for the reasons that you just said, that it's a spacious event where, you know, you can be one on one with the car. You don't have to be five people deep. Um, you could talk to the owners. And yeah, so that's kind of the, the idea behind it as well. Yeah, it's brilliant. Now, the motorcycle event is really cool, too, because I'm not are there. Are there any other motorcycle events in this country that are like that? Not an all-inclusive ticket. There's a lot. There are motorcycle shows, but, um, you know, in true quail fashion, we like to make it all-inclusive. So there's, you know, you don't have to pay for parking. You don't have to pay for food. We have a great barbecue. There's a live band. Um, it's family-friendly. So it's 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 same platform as the car show in August, but it's just a little bit more, uh, I guess, lower key. We get about 3,000 people, 300 motorcycles, um, and you'll have everything from bicycles to, to super bikes we, and everything in between. So yeah. it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. 
It's yeah, it's fantastic. I think it's very cool. And the setting to take a motorcycle show to that level is pretty rare. You think about other big motorcycle events and then you get something like a Sturgis or something, which is the other end of the spectrum. Fun, but it's a whole different thing. This is a whole nother level. So and the bikes that people bring and the cars at the quail that's what stands out to me is there's such an eclectic mix of different kinds of from new to old and themes and everything that's involved i I think it's just absolutely spectacular could you share with us you talk about working on it this is perfect for car month here on cars yeah working with an incredible team of women which i didn't know that Uh, i think that's very very cool so another added touch could you share with us what has been your driving inspiration maybe a key mentor or two in your life someone that's been influential on how they've helped you grow and evolve well I kind of look at that as a twofold question I have a few mentors in my life that I'll I'll share with you but I I kind of look at it as my automotive mentors and then my event inspiration mentors does that make sense yes absolutely okay so when I first started at quail I was very lucky in the people that I was able to meet uh, two of them that really stick out as far as my auto- automotive mentors would be the late Michael Lynch and Winston Goodfellow. Oh, yeah. I met them very, very early on and just hit it off right away. And I really feel like those two individuals took me under their wing, shared with me. I mean, their knowledge is absolutely amazing in the in the industry. So just being able to learn from them, ask them questions you know, have their input on the event on what, you know, classes and they've made a really, that, that's why I'm still in it is because I got to meet them so early on and they just kind of coached and guided me. Uh, you know, I think this is wonderful. Michael was a guest on my show and uh, yeah, sadly we lost him. Winston has been a guest twice, I think now, and is one of those steadfast people. I remember when I first had him on my show, I, I told him, I said, and along with Michael too, I said, you know, I see you every year at Car Week. Who are you? You're like <laughs> everywhere. Why are you everywhere? What you? These are people that not only are steadfast in the car industry for decades, but th- I love to hear that they... They gave back to you and inspired you to become who you become. Oh, absolutely. They're always there with open arms. You know, the lunches that I've had with, with those two, the conversations. Yeah, they're just, they're inspiring. And, and they encouraged me in the industry. So it was always nice to have someone so in the know that you could go to. And that for me was was incredible. It was a, an incredible opportunity. And I, I just feel very lucky to to have had Michael in my in my life as long as I did, and then um, Winston. I continue to have conversations with him um, quite often. Of course, <laughs> which he, I love. <laughs> he's a great character for sure. Now you mentioned also another side of mentorship and influential people. So that's more of my you know my logistics, operational, event planning brain, and that would be Peter Bohr. Mm. You probably don't know that name, um, but he is actually the COO for Hong Kong Shanghai Hotels Limited. That's mm-hmm. the owner of the Peninsula Hotels. He's been with the company for over 30 years, and he's a pivotal part of, of the car show. And what I think why I pick him as my mentor is because he is a true visionary. So when you think, you know, the event is where you want it and where, you know, you're happy with where it is. He challenges us to say, no, make it better. Do Uh more. You can do more. And so when when you hear kind of the vision through his eyes and the inspiration, he kind of just paints this paintbrush of what the event could look like. And it's inspiring. So we go back and we're like, yes, you know, like it just puts a whole new um, perspective and the sky's the limit. And that's what he's very keen on pushing us to. Uh Brilliant. You are fortunate. That's for sure. And I would assume a big part of the success of your events comes from signature hotels and the way they they think about how they run their business and then bringing that into an event. I think that's somewhat rare. In my opinion, when I all the Concord events I go to, most of them think of, okay, this is the Concord, but they don't take all that expertise from running a very high end hotel into that kind of event and that idea of serving. Well, and I think for what I've learned through the Peninsula Hotels is, you know, it's the guest experience from the second we make contact with them Mm -hmm. to their sense of arrival. So when they arrive, you know, it's 
trade passing of champagne, there's a marching band that's playing. And yes. you know, as soon as you come to the event, you feel like, wow, I'm, I'm here. Like, this is great. Yeah. And so, you know, we don't just look at the cars on the field, which are obviously the most important part, but what can we do? How can we make the whole entire event match the cars and that, that level of, you know, that level that the cars are. So right. we put as much emphasis into the culinary aspect, the, um, the guest experience, every, everything about it, we, we kind of take to that, try to take to that level. Well, I'll tell you, you do it. Having attended many quails, uh, spectacular, brilliant. And you're right. You feel like somebody special when you walk in. You don't just wander onto the grass and go, well, I'm here. I mean, everything about it is brilliant. Awesome job that you and your team have done. If I was a woman, a young woman perhaps, or an older woman, and seeking to go into the business path that you have of what you do, what kind of advice would you offer me? I would say to be confident in yourself. Mm. Um, and just to be open to learning and eager to learn. That's kind of how I got involved. Um, obviously, I, like I said earlier, I've been involved in, in cars and motorcycles my whole life, but never to this extent. And just surround yourself with re- really positive people and learn. Just learn, learn, learn yes. and be open to it. I love it. Great advice. Now, when you think about what you're doing there with these events, what has you the most excited about putting on these events? It just thrills you every day you get to be involved in this. Well, there's so many different aspects of my career that have kind of made me really appreciate what I do. Being able to create an event so you get to dream it up and you get to execute it. That's probably my favorite. Um, That's my favorite thing is being able to dream it up and execute. Obviously, you know, hearing all the guest comments and, you know, the praise that we get, that's pretty rewarding, too, to know that, you know, what you've worked on for an entire year has come to life and it was a success. That's at the end of the day, that's what what we try for. I think about the enormous amount of moving parts to put on something like this. If you stop and think about this, listeners, imagine working for an entire year on one day's activities and everything has to flow perfectly. And that doesn't mean what you're doing. It's all these other people have to do exactly what they promised on time, delivered on time, delivered exceptionally, and especially for your event, because you have everything from the minute you walked in and you handed that glass of champagne to when the meals are served, the cars have to show up, the awards. I mean, all these different facets. When I look at that, I look at events differently, and maybe because I've been involved in some, and I sit back and go, holy cow. (laughs) <laughs> you must rest very well that night after that event. Well, first thing Saturday morning, we have our event debrief. So <laughs> yeah, so it, there's no rest. Then you start going, okay, what what did we do right? What did we could we do better? And let's start working on next year, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's um, that's one of the hardest parts too. Is you spend your whole entire year planning for it. Yep. And you, the whole time you are in control of the event because you are, you know, you're dotting your I's, you're crossing your T's, you're making sure all the timelines are together, all the logistics, everything's flowing together. And then about two weeks before the event, that switches and you, you go from being super proactive to being reactive because mm. now the event kind of has turned and it's running you now. <laughs> so you go from being in control to like, oh my gosh. How do we manage? And we just, uh, that's what you do is you just manage from that point forward. And that usually happens about two to three weeks before the event. Yeah, I can't, uh, I cannot imagine. Holy cow. Uh, Bravo to what you guys do. Let's take a short break. Catch our breath. We come back. The challenge question. So sit tight. We'll be right back. Have a glass of champagne while we're gone. (laughs) We'll be back shortly. Crash jewelry is handmade from the metal of luxury cars while preserving the original factory paint. Founder Christy Schimpke came up with the idea when she moved her jewelry studio into her husband's Los Angeles auto body shop. After watching beautiful Porsche ultraviolet fenders and Ferrari Rosso Corsa hoods head to the scrapyard, she developed her own unique upcycling process of cutting, bending, and sanding the metal into unique wearable pieces of beautiful automotive art. For Women's History Month here on Cars Yeah!, 
Crash Jewelry is giving away a special Ferrari Art Deco cuff. The cuff includes an empowering message engraved inside. Enter to win today by subscribing at CrashJewelry.com. Plus, Christy is offering Cars Yeah listeners 10% off in March when you use the code Cars yeah at checkout. That's CrashJewelry.com and use the code Cars yeah today. And don't forget to follow Christy on Instagram at Crash Jewelry. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine Smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions. Ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. Join Linkage. Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. All right, Courtney, let's talk about a challenge. Something now, <laughs> I almost seem ridiculous to ask this because that can't. There has to be a thousand different challenges when you're putting on an event like this. But this could be a challenge with an event. This could be a personal challenge in your life. Something that taught you a really valuable lesson and helped you move forward and be a better person, better manager, better friend, whatever it might be. So take the wheel. So one thing that comes to mind, and I don't know if this is something that I've a term that I've made up or if this is something that is industry wide but I call it post-event depression. Mm. And it sounds crazy, but when you plan an event for an entire year, you know, it's like a roller coaster and you're just, you're climbing and you're climbing and it's exhilarating, it's exciting. And then you get to that point where it's happening and then it's over. Yeah. And when it's over, it's just like the balloon has deflated. Like you just feel like, oh my goodness, We have, you know, it's over and you just have this time and you just like that, you know, like I said, the next morning we're debriefing what we did right, what we did wrong, what we can do better while it's fresh in our head. Yes. But then you have to wait a whole nother year for that event again again. and you do it again. So that um, is something that I really focus on with my team because I don't want anyone to get burned out because it's a lot. It is a lot. It's overwhelming. I push my team so hard. And I just appreciate that they are just willing to keep going and keep going because, you know, it's rewarding, but then you have to do it all over again. So uh, what we do is, you know, you realize that there's that you need a break because your brain cannot just keep going like that. So we all take time off. We take a week at a time, all of us, and we regroup and then we're fresh and then we can start again. But you definitely (laughs) have to take personal time. I mean, just to kind of recap what you just went through. Right. And, it, and separate it, a little bit from it too. Just a- absolutely. You know, another huge elephant or gorilla, whatever you want to call it in the room, is this thing called a pandemic that you've had to deal with. So many have had to deal with. And to plan and work on a show for so long, so hard, so many moving pieces. And of course last year then have to come to that final breaking point of going, this isn't going to happen. We, we, it's just not. There's too many unknowns, too many problems. And I remember when Car Week, all the different players during Car Week all systematically started saying, not going to happen, not going to happen. And I talked to a lot of people about it going, well, how do they know? It's so, much, it's so far away. This is going to be better. But what I don't think people realize with a car show of this magnitude, some people are having to ship their vehicles from so like three, four months in advance. They go on a boat, they go from overseas, they come in. I mean, all the logistics and planning. So Talk a little bit. I don't want to dwell too much because it's so painful. A little bit about how you guys dealt with the pandemic, how you keep people, the quail fresh in their minds, even though we couldn't attend. And what what did that do to your team? <laughs> well, obviously it was, it was hard. It was devastating. But so we, uh, we worked with the, we did what we call the spirit of the quail. And that was a uh, virtual kind of car show. So we, you know, we went out to all of our entrants and asked them to submit their cars. 
we narrowed it down to our top five and we awarded a beautiful Alfa Romeo, um, our spirit of the quail. So that was, that was one thing that we did for the motorcycle show. We did the same thing. We did a call out to all of our entrants, just trying to stay relevant and stay in people's mind. Right. So we did a virtual motorcycle show and all of our entrants, um, submitted videos and, you know, talked about their motorcycles and the passion and the restorations. And, um, so that was a lot of fun too. Yeah. They were great um, by the way. Enjoyed them. Oh, good. I'm glad you were able to watch them. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. You know, it just kept everything going, I guess, in a way for all of us who love to come together and see all the friends that we haven't seen in a while and the great vehicles that you guys put together. So uh, we appreciate that because at least at least we felt like it wasn't the ab- totally abandoned year for, for all of us. And in relative terms, you know, so many people had so much worse time with business loss, lives lost. So shows are kind of on the back burner compared to the seriousness of this. But the fact that for those of us who love events and people could still share that and you still share that, I think it was great. So we we appreciate that. I would assume you still, you're, you're a young woman still. You've got a bucket list, I would assume. Some things you'd still like to accomplish, whether they're evolving around the quail or other personal things. Could you share maybe one or two of those? Sure. I think one thing that this is, I'm speaking for me personally, not necessarily um, the Peninsula Hotels, but I would like to see us venture out more um, into lifestyle events. So maybe um, take the platform of what the car show is and the motorcycle show and, you know, expand that maybe into music or art, cool culinary. Um, So I'd like to see, you know, we do four events and I, I always say I say four, but there's actually five Peninsula Hotels signature events the fifth one is the best of the best the the car show that and pretty much our corporate office handles that event so i i talk about the four but there really are five so yeah i'd like to see us expand um into different into different areas wow uh, ambitious and maybe around the world i don't know <laughs> why not there you go what are some of the ways that you and your team give back to others working for the Peninsula Hotels, we're a very philanthropic company. Um, and so that's one of our, our main focuses all the time. We've initiated a charitable patron ticket. So um, if you purchase this ticket, 50% of the proceeds go directly to our preferred charities. We have preferred charities that we support throughout the year. Um, one of them is the Naval Postgraduate School Foundation. Um, we also partner with Rancho Cielo, uh, which is a local school for at-risk youth. And we just, we have great partnerships with both of those, the property and the charities. Fantastic. It's a great, it's a great synergy. Absolutely. My father-in-law attended the uh, graduate school there back when my wife was in junior high and they lived in your neighborhood for a year while they went to language school before they went off to South America. So uh, she always speaks highly of of that year that they got to spend there uh, learning Spanish and uh, spending time on the coast there and uh, Sunday afternoons on 17 mile drive having picnics and uh, driving through the Carmel Valley. So very, very nice. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, very cool. Well, let's talk about probably the biggest high point you can think of in your life so far, something that you're really proud of. Okay, so this was um, through Winston Goodfellow, but um, he arranged for Carol Shelby to be one of our fireside chat guests. I was there. I remember that day. That was very cool. It was just such a neat, it was just, it was just incredible to be part of that. And we had, I don't know if you saw, but we had a tribute tent to Carol Shelby. So it was like this Texas barbecue yep. um, tent. Uh-huh. And we had his chili. Uh, we yeah. had pecan pie. <laughs> and he came up to me after um, after the event and just thanked me for the amer- the amazing experience that he was given at the wow. quail. How um, nice. And I was just so proud. And then he went on to tell me that the pecan pie was the best he's ever had. <laughs> and he said, you know, I, I'm going to say this, but you know, it's going to make my, um, my grandmother roll over in her grave. <laughs> this was the best pecan pie I've ever had. So that was just one of those moments where I just, it was just so special. He was so sincere and it just felt so good that we were able to, 
honor him in, in such a way. That was so cool. And I have to admit, I had two pieces of that pecan pie. Don't tell anybody, okay? It was good. I love it. I remember that. Yeah. I think the only better pecan pie I've ever had, and I'm saying this because I know my mom's listening. Hi, mom. Is She makes a killer pecan pie where she has a very thin layer of semi-sweet chocolate on the bottom of that pecan pie. Mm. It's, yeah, it's killer. So, uh, but that was an amazing event. I really enjoyed that. Sitting there listening to him speak was uh, very, very cool. Let's take one more short break. We come back. I'm going to talk to you about the ultimate drive. So keep your seatbelt on. Yeah, that was good pecan pie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm so glad you had it. That's so fun. <laughs> I did. I was there. I remember that. Yeah. We've got some pictures. So I'll have to dig those up. Cars yeah is proud to support our veterans, which is why I've teamed up with our nonprofit partner, Tech Force Foundation, through its Veterans at Work Military Transition Campaign. The tech shortage is very real, and our country needs skilled, qualified techs to keep our cars, trucks, airplanes, and fleets rolling. When so many vets build their skills in maintaining and servicing vehicles when deployed, Tech Force helps transition those skills to jobs as professional technicians when they come home. Learn more about Tech Force Foundation and its Veterans at Work Military Transition Fund at techforce.org today. Hey, fellow inspiring automotive enthusiasts, did you know if you subscribe at carsdad.com, I'll send you my free filler up book? It's an ebook filled with fuel, filler fun, and inspirational quotes from past guests here on Cars Yeah. Plus, you'll get a weekly wrap-up email from me every Friday, and your name will be in the hat for one of the many free giveaways here at Cars Yeah. Simply go to CarsYeah.com and click on the free book button, and boom, you're in the club. And don't forget to subscribe to Cars Yeah on your mobile podcast app, and you'll get the Cars Yeah show delivered right to your mobile device every day, absolutely free. Inspiring automotive enthusiasts, that's what we're all about. Here at Cars, yeah. Thanks for listening. All right. Now, if I could wave my magic wand and allow you to go on what I call the ultimate drive. Now, this is where you get to pick the person you're riding with. This could be somebody living or someone who's passed. The kind of car you're in, and you get to decide if you're driving or they're driving. Who and what would it be? Okay. Well, I actually had to do a lot of thinking on this question. (laughs) It's a tough one. Uh (laughs) But I would pick the Flying Scotsman. Ooh, I, uh, yes. I, I thought Sir Jackie Stewart would be so much fun to to drive with. I would be a passenger. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Um, I would feel very safe. And I would let him pick the road and the car. Ah, very cool. Now, this is interesting. When you think of Sir Jackie Stewart, what would he pick to drive if it would be something old? Now, let me ask you this, and I'm trying to recall, have you had any of his old, now he's plenty of race cars, obviously, but that's going to be tough for you to ride in a race car. Any cars where you could have a passenger that you think associates with him somehow that maybe he drove? Yeah. Yeah. What would it be? Well, I did, I, um, his, it looks like his first car might have been an Austin A30. Okay. So for kind of the nostalgia, and it's it's a pretty cute car. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that would be I think that would be fun. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And the the road, I you know, I would pick. I would just let him pick the road too. Um, he <laughs> has so many experiences, and I don't think there's just one question I would ask him. I would just look forward to a very candid conversation with him. You know, learning about his experiences and stories. I. I never get tired listening to his interviews. Yeah, it'd be that would be very cool. Here, I got an idea. He take he he picks you up there at the quail. You drive out. You go over Laurel's grade down to Laguna Seca. He takes you on a few laps of Laguna Seca and then back over the grade and back to Carmel. Of course, uh, that would be pretty exciting. I don't know if you'd have any time to ask <laughs> questions because it would be so so thrilling with all the corners and everything. But I think that's a first starting point. How does that sound? I love it. I mean, on the track with him, holy moly. Yeah, that'd be cool. Or maybe then from there out to the coast and down to Big Sur and back. That would be a little more leisure where you could talk a little bit more. So, yeah, I've got it all mapped out for you, Courtney. I'll give him a call. I love it. I mean, I, I, you could have said Monaco, you know. Well, I, but well, I, I, can, stay, I can stay here and, and your, too. See, your taste <laughs> is, is up in the champagne bracket. I'm down on the beer budget. So 
Yeah, Monaco, that sounds pretty nice too. Driving out of Monaco up into the mountains. There you go. I like the way you think, Courtney. All right, how about a book? Is there a book you've read that you'd like to share with our listeners? Yeah, so more of an inspiring book is how I kind of looked at this one. Um, yes. But the the book, it's a very simple book and it's called The Four Agreements. And it is really just four basic things that if you think about they are in your head and in your brain, you'll be happier. Yeah. It's you'll yeah. be a better person. So I don't are you familiar with the four I am, agreements? I am, absolutely. Yeah. It's a great book. I actually listened to the audible version of that. It's by uh, um, Ruiz, I think is his last name. Yeah. Don Miguel Ruiz. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's narr the narrator for that on the audiobook has done a great job. I like him. He's done other books. Peter Coyote, I believe is his name, but you've picked a good one. I think that's a great, it's just one of those uplifting mind or, or I guess life focusing type things. That's the way I took it. And it's four simple things that are easy to remember. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I'll make sure I put a link to that on Courtney's show notes page. There's also a great place in the Cars yeah website called Guest Recommended Books, where there's over 1,800 books listed there. Quick, easy clicks to buy. So check out The Four Agreements if you're not familiar with that. Fun, great read. Oh, Courtney, you've taken me on a very nice ride today. I'm so happy we got to get together. So good to hear your voice. Before I let you go, before you drive off into the sunset with Sir Jackie, could you, <laughs> could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance? I'm going to say it again, and it's just to be confident. Just be confident in yourself. Um, stay eager. Stay relevant and, and dream big. There you go. I love it. What are the many ways people can follow you guys and keep up with your events? That would be through our website. We have our Instagram channels, our Facebook channels. We're all over, so... We're easy to find. Absolutely. Just put the quail out there in your Google search bar and everything will pop up. All sorts of cool photos and so forth. And so far as of this show, we're going to have a show this year. <laughs> we are cautiously optimistic. Absolutely. Um, sadly, we have canceled our May event, which was our motorcycle event, but we're full force ahead with August and the event will might look a little bit different. We're going to be limiting attendance even more, but we're expanding the event footprint. So it's, um, you know, there'll be plenty of social distancing and we're doing everything we can to make it the best the best quail yet. It's all we can do these days. Uh, Courtney, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for... Uh for getting together with me today. Uh, I want to thank Nathan uh, Espinosa. He's been so great on bringing me some great guests during Women's Month and the rest of the time from Con Media. So thank you so much to, to him. Thank you, Courtney, for spending some time with us today, being so generous with your expertise and your positive, uplifting messages. Until you and I talk again, I usually say I'll see you down the road, but I'll see you at the quail. Sounds great. I look forward to seeing you this year. <laughs> me too. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.